A very warm welcome to everyone. Um, my name is Anand Galapati, and I am a, a co-director of MHPSS.net. Uh, and it's my great pleasure uh, on behalf of the ISC uh, MHPSS Reference Group and its thematic working group on MHPSS and peace building um, to uh, welcome you to this latest webinar in our series on the intersection between the two fields. Um, for those of you who are not familiar uh, with the ISC MHPSS Reference Group. Um, could I have the next uh, slide, please? Yeah. Um, it was established in, in December 2007 and consists of now, I think, somewhat more than 50 members, rep which represent a very unique collaboration between NGOs, the UN, and international agencies and academics that seeks to promote the best practices in MHPSS. And to support um, the field, the, the Reference Group works through uh, thematic working groups that facilitate the development and dissemination of guidance on specific areas of MHPSS. And um, next slide, please. Uh, the, uh, the MHPSS and Peace Building Working Group is one of these, uh, these uh, thematic groups. And that was established uh, in uh, February 2019. And it is currently co-chaired by IOM, and Catholic Relief Services and has members from agencies working in very diverse contexts, as you can see from the slide. And the current focus of the work, uh, the group's work, is to strengthen linkages between MHPSS and peace building through the, the development of practical guidance and through the facilitation of technical discussions and exchanges. And this webinar series is a part of that latter uh, approach. Uh, and we're really delighted that Tamara van der Putten uh, from one of our member agencies, HealthNet TPO, will be moderating today's presentations uh, and the discussion with colleagues uh, joining us from South Sudan and Colombia. And I'd like to hand over to you now, Tamara, to take us forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ananda, for this introduction. And um, thank you also for the entire MHPSS.net team for, for opening uh, this space. Good uh, afternoon, everyone, y buenos días uh, a todas y a todos. It's really wonderful to see how many people have connected and, and have shown interest in this webinar and are connecting also from different parts of the, of the world. Um, thank you so much. Welcome. And we hope that you'll find it an inspiring session uh, today. Um, I want to start out by first giving thanks to our interpreters, uh, Raul Mendoza Valdivia and René Centeno, who throughout the session will uh, ensure that we have ma uh, maximum accessibility through uh, their English uh, Spanish uh, translation services. So thank you both. Um, we will try to talk as slowly as possible to help this process along, um, while of course being mindful of, of the time. So my name is Istamara uh, and I will be moderating our, our webinar for today. I'm currently based in the Netherlands in Amsterdam and I work for HealthNet TPO. HealthNet TPO is an international organization that works uh, for the last 30 years implementing public health programs and evidence-based MHPSS interventions in areas affected by conflict. We understand uh, health in its holistic and broadest form. Um, we believe that there's no health without mental health and there's no mental health without the systems and the conditions that guarantee uh, a life in, in dignity, uh, peace and well-being. Our experience as HealthNet TPO over the last 30 years has really shown that MHPSS is deeply linked with processes of, of peace building and social reconstruction. In fact, peace building is not some abstract uh, term uh, confined to the halls of power. Uh, peace starts from within, from fostering internal capacities and resources, but also from below by working together with communities who are at the heart of, of the action. Who, who not only live, but breathe uh, the realities of conflict and its repercussions on a, on a daily basis. So today's uh, webinar falls on a very significant day, uh, on, on International Peace Day. And um, we will be exploring some critical issues at the heart of peace and well-being. Uh, today we'll be hearing from uh, practitioners and women advocates uh, from different and distant uh, countries. 
yet profoundly connected uh, corners of the world, namely South Sudan and, and Colombia. These are very uh, different contexts, uh, each with its own set of challenges and complexities, uh, its own histories, systems, and cultures, but it's precisely this diversity that I think makes today's conversation so essential. Um, ultimately, peace and, and well-being should transcend borders, so it makes sense that our conversation and dialogue transcend uh, them as well. Um, what we hope is that, um, yeah, by opening the space and, and sharing and by them sharing their unique perspectives, uh, that our speakers will hopefully enrich our understanding of these complex uh, links and interlinkages between mental health, psychosocial well-being and, and peace building. And especially in the context of South Sudan and Colombia, where peace processes are still ongoing, where both countries are affected by the long-term effects and, and consequences of, of conflict and structural violence, and are also felt and experienced and lived in so many different ways. Uh, it feels that shedding these lights on these themes is, is actually more important than ever, um, especially as different power structures and dynamics and inequities in, in, in access to health and, and basic services and factors such as gender-based violence continue to fuel these cycles of violence and distress. So for the past years, um, as HealthNet TPO, we have been receiving support from the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs to uh, implement a program uh, seeking to precisely uh, integrate these two components of psychosocial well-being and peace building. We do this in alliance with different national and international partners under the Women, Peace and Security Framework. Um, in both programs, we work closely with communities uh, to promote an environment where especially women and girls can feel safe and where they can participate in peace building processes uh, and make a difference to improve their health and well-being. We always tailor our interventions, but at the core, uh, both of our programs seek to promote self-care practices, uh, empower uh, community-based actors as the first line responders uh, to carry out activities, uh, to uh, identify and address root causes of distress, uh, promoting positive coping mechanisms, collective care practices, uh, tackling social determinants of health, including gender-based violence. All of this while strengthening access to uh, essential services and community-based systems and networks. So all of these activities are essential for increasing psychosocial well-being and building and maintaining peace within a community. So uh, today we will have the opportunity to hear about all of this and much more um, from the experiences of our HealthNet TPO staff who are implementing uh, these programs. We will be hearing from our MHPSS practitioners who are based in South Sudan and Colombia. Uh, they will give us more contextual information about each country uh, and within also the context of our Women, Peace and Security programs, uh, including some lessons learned. And uh, since there's going to be quite a lot of information to process, we'll also have a bit of a visual break uh, and show you some videos from each country. Hopefully it won't break and the connection will be okay uh, and you'll be able to see them. Um, but in addition to hear from our program staff, we're especially honored to have with us uh, two inspiring women um, Loli Huajibioy and Harriet Awate, who are joining us from uh, Colombia and South Sudan, and who will be shedding light on their di direct, unique uh, lived experiences um, as advocates uh, to promote peace and well being within their communities in uh, South Sudan and Colombia. So, we would like to thank you very much uh, to both of you for being here and for making the time uh, to be with us today. So I'll be introducing actually each speaker uh, and give more background about each one of them as we proceed uh, through the webinar. Um, but meanwhile, thank you everyone again for, for joining us. Uh, we are very happy to have you all here and we really hope that these discussions will be fruitful and, and inspiring. 
So uh, as Ananda mentioned at the beginning throughout the session, we welcome any questions you have. Uh, the chat box is open, so please feel free to post your questions either in English or in Spanish. And uh, if you can, please direct them to a particular speaker. Uh, we'll be compiling them at the end of the webinar and we'll have a Q&A &Q uh, session at the end where, where the speakers will try to answer these. Um, so for those of you who connected from Colombia, you can follow the instructions in the chat about the Spanish English translation um, uh, and select the language that you wanna hear, hear the webinar in. So, okay, now moving on to our first speaker and presenter of today, who will take us through our first uh, journey through Colombia, uh, Carolina Leguizamón Martínez. Uh, Carolina is our program uh, coordinator for HealthNet TPO uh, in Bogotá, Colombia. Uh, Carolina is a Colombian social researcher and psychotherapist uh, with a master's degree in uh, human systems intervention. She's a skilled facilitator specializing in the narrative approach to psychosocial work and the integration of innovative audiovisual approaches with organizations and communities. For the last 14 years, she has worked in different countries and peace building contexts as MHPSS consultant, including with migrants and women survivors of violence. Uh, she will also briefly be joined by uh, another colleague, um, Andrea Ardila, who is working as our MHPSS officer in Colombia, who will provide a short intervention as well, including some key uh, contextual information that will help situate our work in Colombia and also later our conversation with, with Loli as well. Uh, Andrea is a psychologist and a dance movement psychotherapist, uh, integrating a systemic, decolonial and feminist perspective within her work. So um, without further ado, thank you both. And Carolina, the floor is yours. Thank you, Tamara. And thank you all of you for being here. And thank you to um, HPSS.net and um, HPSS and um, Peace Building Group for making this possible. Uh, so let's start with the uh, presentation. I want to give you a brief context about my country, our country. So as many of you know, the history or uh, armed conflict in Colombia goes back almost six decades. Uh, nowadays, although Colombia is considered a middle income country, it is a country with uh, great inequalities and accumulation of capital in the hands of few people or organization. The problem of drug trafficking, um, the presence of armed groups and unofficial armed groups belonging to uh, the state have been the protagonists of a long war for territorial and financial control. Colombia has been trying to make different peace agreements signed since the 60s, uh, as, as you see on the slide. Uh, and after some failed attempts to reach a peace agreement with one of the largest guerrilla groups in the in the continent, the FARC, in 2016, former President Santos uh, was able to consolidate the signing of a um, peace agreement that has, as one of its priorities, the implementation of comprehensive reparation measures and truth for the victims, uh, including the creation of different psychosocial reparation measures. Unfortunately, the implementation of the peace agreement has been very difficult to consolidate and there has been a regrouping of, ar of armed actors. The election of the new president of Colombia, Gustavo Petro, a left-wing president with a huge political and activist experience, uh, shown that has provided an opportunity to review the points of the peace agreement that require more attention. Next. Um, in Colombia, with more than 8 million victims of the internal armed conflict, uh, for almost 4.8 million internally displaced 
uh, first place people and thousands of social and political leaders assassinated. The armed conflict in Colombia has left great violence, violations of human rights. Rural populations, uh, indigenous people, Afro-Colombian people, Afro-Colombian women, LGBTQI plus communities, children and young people have been the most affected population. In this context, in addition to the crimes of forced disappearance, forced recruitment, forced displacement, displacement, among others, the different types of gender-based violence, especially sexual violence, continue to affect the lives and rights of um, women and girls. Um, for, for indigenous people, this scenario becomes even more complex since the Spanish and European colonization uh, um, have affected uh, the territories and resources of our um, ancestral communities. Next. Mm, based on the different health research carried out in Colombia, it is evident that the gender component must be taken into account in the different epidemiological analysis. Because uh, depending on the social determinants of health that uh, differentially affect men and women, different disease processes or illness processes and health processes happen Within the framework of justice, truth, and reparation actions, the country has implemented psychosocial attention um, programs that have shown the prevalence of emotional suffering, suicidal behavior, depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress, among others, as a result of the violence uh, in, in the frame of the armed conflict and gender-based violent experience. And beyond this is um, it has also been found that the communities have their own resources to face uh, the um, disease uh, processes or suffering or emotional suffering processes and promote their well-being despite the great the great uh, access barriers and the um, a few institutional offer that exists in, exists in many territories of our country. Our own processes of context analysis as HealthNet have ratified that for the communities, health corresponds to a multidimensional process that is related to the guarantee of rights and the concept of governance. Therefore, ensuring the integral health of people implies in strengthening service networks and community bonding. Um, in the, in the context of the internal armed conflict, as you can see uh, on the slide, the war between armed uh, groups uh, for territorial control, the control of drug trafficking groups over strategic drug trafficking routes, um, has caused the indigenous Afro-Colombian and rural populations to be affected by major crimes, human rights violations. Um, in Colombia, there are about 115 recognized indigenous communities and about 60 native languages, most of them at risk of, of uh, extinction. Next, please. So as you can see, Colombia is a multi-ethnic country in which ethnic difference required implementation of actions in public health and mental health from a um, differential and culturally situated perspective that uh, assume, as, as we assume, assume in HealthNet, as a ludogenic uh, approach and intervention that combine traditional knowledge from the cosmovision of the communities and the knowledge of the different disciplines. Mm -hmm. Next, please. Uh, after the development of our community research processes and the war within the framework of the WAP program in Colombia, we know that in the case of women and indigenous, migrant, rural, and Afro-Colombian population, 
it is necessary that the institutional offer is oriented to strengthening com of community capacities and individual um, empowerment tools. Um, understanding the sociocultural, uh, economic, and historical origin of the processes of health and disease, as well as integrating the intersectional and the colonial perspective with their intervention. As you can see in the slide, thousands of women have been victims of armed conflict in Colombia. And in this case, we uh, want to mention some data on indigenous women in Colombia, showing that um violence have has a multifactorial effects on women lives territories and bodies next please some of the lessons learned throughout this process uh after um after our interventions refer to the need to understand that mental health problems and mental health diagnosis are closely related to the social, cultural, and economic condition of the community. So that measures of the, um, um, to promote the well-being of communities require a systematic approach, focus on strengthening community practice for health promotion and disease prevention, and also require the confirmation and interdisciplinary workforce capable of leading by psychosocial healthcare tools. Uh, next, please. Uh, so as many of you know, and as Tamara said, HealthNet is currently working in Colombia within the framework of the WAP program, which seeks to promote the participation and protection of women and girls in peace building processes in Colombia. This program is implemented in a consortium of five organizations, three Colombian and two Dutch and is implementing in five different regions of the country. Our team is currently working mainly in Meta, Putumayo, Guajira, and Bolivar, um, and, and Nariño too. Um, in the frame of this program, next please, our team is working in three main areas. The first uh, one refers to advocacy and research processes around the intersection between um, HPSS and peace building. In this scenario, we ultimately aim to develop advocacy action in MH for uh, in MHPSS for peace building. And we work in cooperation with uh, some things from the Colombian Ministry of Health and Social Protection. Um, we uh, develop uh, forums and um, workshops around uh, the experiences on, um, M on MHPSS and peace building uh, from our communities, but also uh, from the experiences of institution and academic research. Next, please. The second one is related to the generation of protection strategies. In this strategic line, we focus on psychosocial capacity building to psychosocial focal points. Our team in Colombia developed, uh, developed specific methodologies and strategic alliances to combine specialized tools with local knowledge to promote spaces of care, self-care, and psychosocial accompaniment. The last one, refers to the development development of empowerment action in which we are carrying out an analysis process to establish the link between psychosocial support actions and support for the um, uh, sustainability of women's economic autonomy uh, projects. Mm, next, please. After this context, I would like to emphasize that it is also important to acknowledge how, as we are talking about mental health, it is essential for professional and psychosocial uh, focal points to be able to to be able to handle trauma informed actions uh, and trauma informed tools without harm, as well as to have self care tools that allow them to lead actions of contention 
and non revictimization um, intervention. It is especially relevant to train, uh, at least for us, the community agents and community teams in MHPSS care and intervention tools based on the gender approach and uh, psychocultural approach not only to ensure comprehensive, comprehensive uh, care action, but also to achieve um, effective uh, and comprehensive measures of advocacy. Therefore, it will also be necessary to work in coordination with existing institutional offer and the different strategic actors that are uh, active uh, in each territory. Um, uh, now, let me introduce you to Andrea Ardila, our psychosocial and mental health uh, component leader and psychologist and expert in psychosocial accompaniment process based on uh, corporal tools. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carolina. Um, so, as my colleague was saying, in Colombia, the history of violence throughout six decades has left profound collective and individual wounds that are worth uh, attending from several perspectives. However, the impacts of the armed conflict varied from different areas of the country, and some of them, which had the indirect impacts, did not receive enough um, attention or neither uh, program resources to deal with these impacts. Within this complex, complex context, HealthNet TPO lands in Sibundo y Putumayo, meeting uh, this reality intertwined with the systems of discriminations that the population uh, that live there receive. Uh, the, complex, the complexity of this context highlights the importance to address mental health as a collective and individual experience toward the peace building processes, which needs to acknowledge and work with the oppression systems. Um, throughout the research process in Colombia, in the different uh, regions that Carolina already mentioned, we have found common understandings of mental health as well-being, balance, and integral, integral health. In this sense, women from different communities highlight the need to have decent living conditions to live under no armed conflict, to have the right of owning land and respect to our own ancestral knowledge, to be able to participate within political affairs, to come with free time to take care of themselves and not being punished for this, to live with cultural dynamics which promote equal rights and nonviolent environments for women and children. Hence, when we talk about peace, they are directly referring to mental health and the other way around. They do not understand one without the other. For women in Colombia, mental health is the capacity to deal with the circumstances from each country in each context, um, but they stress the fact that this does not mean that women or anyone really have to put up with violent environments or to naturalize them to force mental health, as it is as much an, an individual that it is a collective responsibility and dynamic. In Colombia, it has been a while since different psychosocial support processes acknowledge the need to integrate arts as dealing with strategies which promote creativity, collective healing, and enhance women's economic autonomy. However, as Helmet TPO, we also found the need to qualify and support these experiences um, to be able uh, to relate them with therapeutic tools to promote self-care and collective care with the facilitators from different regions, but also uh, with the community in general. Uh, this also is uh, important to highlight that we need to act without uh, harm, with actions without harm. Women from different regions have mentioned organizations and individuals who have entered the community without, with a workshop or with uh, any other intervention, and they and un they end up doing revictimization actions. Therefore, we have found the importance to work with a biopsychosocial and culturally situated perspectives and specialized tools that can actually support them and not perpetrate violent cycles in their lives. 
In conclusion, we cannot understand the system, the symptom or pathology without a context that might be reproducing or maintaining the function of the symptom with violent dynamics. Moving forward, we will present a video with highlights of the forum that took place last year in November. It was hosted by Helmut TPO and La Universidad Javeriana, one of the most important universities in Latin, in Latin America. This event was an opportunity to develop conversations based on the need to integrate mental health and self-care practices as core perspectives involved um, in peace building processes. The dialogues and bodily experience involve various sectors of the society, such as the academia, indigenous Afro-Colombian and rural community experiences, government institutions, and NGOs. After the event, advocacy relationships began to be developed with some of these actors with whom collaborations have been carried out throughout this year, developing community interventions and events to keep sharing experiences of mental health and peace building from a pers gender perspective. In fact, this year we are hosting the second event, uh, the second version of this forum, and we will be inviting you all to participate either online or in the face-to-face -face version. Without further, further ado, we present you to the work of the communications team that has been christening health not TPO process in Colombia. ¿Cómo podemos seguir integrando el apoyo a la salud mental y la consolidación de la paz, mirada diferencial, tomando en cuenta un enfoque de género? Y finalmente, ¿cómo podemos desarrollar intervenciones más sostenibles y holísticas que respondan a las necesidades y realidades propias de las comunidades? Entendemos el autocuidado como un proceso de corresponsabilidad y responsabilidad colectiva. No hay autocuidado sin cocuidado sin redes y condiciones sociales, psicológicas, eh, culturales, emocionales y por supuesto biológicas, en el sentido de que el territorio también en el que habitamos es el cuerpo. En este evento destacaremos las iniciativas y propuestas psicosociales basadas en las comunidades y abriremos diálogos críticos de saberes sobre qué quiere decir practicar y construir una paz inclusiva para la salud mental en Colombia. La Comisión de la Verdad encontró que el adjetivo más común de la guerra es que las mujeres son parte del botín de guerra. Desde hace muchos años, en todas las guerras, una forma contraria de los adversarios era utilizar sus mujeres como parte del territorio de guerra. Tengan en cuenta a los profesionales, pero de las comunidades, porque somos nosotros quienes miramos la necesidad. Y sentimos esas necesidades y quienes vivimos esas problemáticas, ¿sí? para dar cuenta de la importancia de conversar, de compartir puntos de vista, de construir colectivamente. Es eh, tan hermoso escuchar que el mismo sentir está cuando ella no vive en mi territorio, pero son las líderes. Los procesos de construcción de paz siempre parten desde abajo y no podemos empezar a hablar de salud mental y construcción de paz sin abrir las puertas a quienes no solo se comprometen, pero que viven estos temas cada día. Todas mujeres resilientes, fuertes, sobrevivientes. Unas para sobrevivir se alejaron de todo y guardaron silencio. Otras se abanderaron como lideresas sociales. Otras hicieron colectivos de apoyo mutuo. Hay diversidad de voces y soluciones según los caminos que cada una iba mirando para sí misma. Pero todas tuvieron que reconstruirse. Es por eso que la salud mental de las mujeres es de vital importancia. Nosotros como lideresas vivimos el completo de la misma. Nosotros somos 24 7. A nosotros nos tocan la puerta a las 8, a las 12, al mediodía. Apoyar la salud mental es indispensable para lograr la paz y la reconciliación. 
construir la paz significa san sanar las heridas y cuidar la salud mental de todas y todos de forma integrada. Thank you both, Carolina, Andrea, uh, for the presentation. I think we can go back to the, uh, to the original presentation. Okay. Um, thank you for giving this contextual background um, about Colombia and, and uh, the work uh, that you've been doing. And it's unfortunate that the uh, video quality was quite poor and, and patchy because it's a beautiful video. So we will share uh, the link I think in the chat box, so you can see uh, later later on if you wish. Um, now, what really stands out uh, of this of this uh, of your presentation is really the important gendered dimension of mental health and peace building, and and the role that women um, uh, play and continue playing in promoting these processes. Um, and also, uh, it's important and it's so important to recognize uh, within the context of the incredible diversity of a country like Colombia, uh, to recognize the multitude uh, of, of impacts that different uh, social, economic, political and other conditions have had on different populations. Um, and we will have a chance to hear later uh, by Loli uh, from her indigenous uh, perspective. Um, when she talks talks uh, talks to us a little bit more. Now, uh, before moving on to the uh, next uh, speaker, I encourage uh, people again to ask your questions in the in the chat box, including in, in Spanish, if you want. So, um, if there's any points that you feel feel you want to know more about, uh, please uh, uh, share them, uh, and we'll try to address them later on. So, moving on now to our next speaker. Um, who will be taking us on a very different journey to a very different context, uh, namely in South Sudan. I want to open the floor now to Boniface Aduku Dixon. Boniface is our program manager for HealthNet TPO based in Juba, South Sudan. He is a South Sudanese community development professional with over 15 years experience working in programmatic management of MHPSS interventions. Boniface has an in-depth background in managing and developing community-based approaches with specific focus on strengthening local capacities at individual, family, and community level, uh, and in the management of health and psychosocial issues as a way of improving health and development outcomes. Thank you, Boniface. We look forward to, to hear your presentation. Thank you so much, uh, Tamara, and uh, all the colleagues. And a special thanks goes to the MHPSS.net and the Global Reference Group for hosting this important event. Uh, I'm pleasure to meet you all here and to share experiences from uh, South Sudan. So we can go to the next slide. So I will present a very brief background in the context of South Sudan. And uh, as all of us know that the Comprehensive Peace Agreement uh, that was signed in 2005 ended uh, more than 50 years of civil war between Northern and Southern Sudan. Uh, six years down the road, the country uh, went into a referendum and was able to gain independence uh, in 2011 and makes that the youngest country in the globe. Not many years after the independence and the gains of the independence that people are actually beginning to uh, you know, enjoy and leverage into uh, in 2020, 13, and then 2020, 2016, you know, the country fell back into you know, a civil war, which basically you know, uh, dismantled the gains and the hopes of the people in this new young country. And uh, that actually basically worsened a lot of you know, humanitarian uh, situation with a lot of displacement uh, outside the country as well as within the country. And the hope came back again in 2018 when a revitalized the peace agreement on the resolution of the conflict 
and South Sudan was assigned uh, by all the rival parties to the conflict. And that brought a lot of hope again to the population uh, of South Sudan. Since then, as of 2020, uh, as part of the provision of the transition of, of um, the revitalized peace agreement, a transitional uh, government of national unity was formed uh, that brought all the conflicting party on board. And this has opened a lot of hope and basically, you know, ways for uh, recovery and peace building processes. And in that, I think most important thing here is that within the government, there is a ministry that has been specifically designated for you know, peace building, reconciliation, and uh, uh, all those kind of, you know, issues are being taken care of in the transitional government of national unity. As of 2020, up to the present, series of reforms had happened with a lot of extension of uh, the implementation of the peace agreement, a lot of historic floods, that are resulting from the environment, the impact of COVID-19 continue to be felt in the population with by the population of South Sudan. And as I talk now, the country is looking forward to holding election uh, by 2025, and the country is preparing and gearing towards having an election in one and a half years to come. Next. So the uh, South Sudan basically is characterized by multiple factors. And these factors ranges from social, cultural, to ethnic, and then to religious factors. And with that, because of all these social cultural dynamics of um, the communities in South Sudan, a lot of community violence happens and uh, revenge killings, cattle raiding or rustling or stealing are widespread. Child marriage remains the most threshing issue and widespread. And Richard has shown that about 52% of South Sudanese women marry you know, at the age of 15 and 18. At the worst scenario, even children are married out at as young as 12 years. And that therefore shows that about 65% of women and girls basically you know, have experienced in their lifetime uh, one form or two forms of gender-based violence. And that is actually very high and actually doubles you know, the global data of women that have experienced uh, sexual gender-based violence. There are high prevalences of mental health problems in, in South Sudan. And Charleston et al. actually found in his one of his study, and that is something that is globally known, that at least one in five people in conflict setting and in contexts like South Sudan suffers from mental health problems. Uh, Misisi also, on his study on South Sudanese refugees that had been displaced in the neighboring country, and especially in Uganda, found that about 76% of uh, these people suffer from mental health related illnesses. And in Juba alone, you know, depression has become a chronic illness. And just as of recent, and WHO compiled the data of, of, of people that are basically depressed. And he found that out of about uh, 425 people completed suicide successfully on the, in, year, in, in one year. And that characterizes a lot of this uh, depression uh, state in the in, in South Sudan. Next. So how are we as health and TP or South Sudan trying to respond uh, to some of this need? And uh, as introduced by Tamara from the beginning that uh, health and TPO is implementing the Women Peace Security Program in South Sudan uh, running from 2021 to 2025. And the overall aim is basically we are contributing to an environment, an, an, an environment for women and girls that uh, helps them to participate, empower them so that they can meaningfully participate uh, in processes of uh, leveraging peace in, in, their, in their communities. 
and I work there for contributes to, you know, enhancing protection of women and girls, decreasing harmful traditional practices uh, that are detrimental to the rights of women and girls, and creating an equal leverage to conflict prevention, resolution, peace building processes, and recovery. And we do this by having, creating a network of, of people in the communities that are very concerned about uh, the psychosocial uh, aspects of people and the population in the communities. And with this, we provide training, select training, uh, psychosocial focal points. We train them on community mobilization, skill MHPSS, uh, GVV, uh, prevention and respond to, to these issues that are being felt widely by especially women and girls, youth and young people in this country. And uh, we work in five different states in South Sudan, uh, in Central Equatorial State, we are in Terekeka, in Eastern Equatorial State, we are in Nimule and Torit, in Yambio, Western Equatorial State, in Ganyel and Nyal, in um, uh, Bentu and Unity State, and then in Lake States in the Ural East. And this is where we are implementing the Women, Peace, Security Program. Next slide. Um, so, partner, and I would want to talk on engagement of the psychosocial focal points as one of the important models that we have developed to be able to create a network of psychosocial caregivers at the community level as a step-by-step -step process of how we engage them. And then, uh, first of all, uh, we have engagement with stakeholders at the community's local chiefs to ensure they accept the programs, they understand the program in depth, they understand their roles and uh, their responsibilities and uh, accept the program and they participate in that. And that is how we do it. And then we select uh, the psychosocial focal points uh, in the community. And these are people who already have some responsibilities within the community who are respected in the community are selected. And then they are provided training uh, on different aspects of uh, GVV, mental health promotion, GVV prevention, uh, community mobilization skills, and uh, uh, basic uh, psychosocial uh, counseling skills, uh, psychological first aid, and a range of uh, uh, components that uh, we provide to these psychosocial focal points in the community. And then they go back to their communities and they begin to mobilize uh, women groups, youth groups, men groups in the communities and form structures, work with the structures within the community to be able to enhance mental health promotion of gender equality and uh, many other aspects. And then the PAPs themselves identify uh, uh, MHPSS, GVV issues in their communities, design and uh, together with these different community groups and structures, uh, lobby and advocacy key messages, and then they try to work on issues that they can address some of these root causes that have been identified, and then uh, offer basic counseling and a referral for other services. Uh, and then continue kind of mentoring uh, coaching and supervision of the psychosocial focal points in the community and supporting them. And then we do monitoring and evaluation of how this uh, project is moving on. Next. So the key achievement with the specific focus on the psychosocial focal points. We trained 50 PFPs uh, all over the communities that we are implementing and we are working in and in the five states. And uh, we realize incredible uh, impact from the community as they were well recognized in the community and they are trusted uh, of all their communities members. And the PAPs have basically at the beginning when we started, when they were selected and we begin to train them when we assess their mental health status, their stress level was really, really very high at the beginning. And we realized we took them a lot of, you know, self-care trainings and activities, how they can take care of their mental health, provide them and support and all that. At the end, they were able to, you know, own deal with their own mental health. As we know, there is indeed no care without care for caregivers, people who, because of the 
stories they listened from the survivors of gender-based violence and all that is sometimes very traumatic to them as well. And we do take care of the mental health of the psychosocial for components as well. We, we train them on, the, on skills on community mobilization that has already been said on counseling skills and all that. And then they have established, you know, and organize women groups in the community, example, engaging with men and their wives as change agents in the communities. And men have now come to acknowledge, you know, their roles in fueling violence and uh, gender inequality at the communities. And then the PAP basically act as a, you know, watch uh, people in the community where all cases of GBB are reported to them, they identify them and they provide them uh, initial support and then they are able to refer to other uh, services for, for help. We use a, a model and that is the resource mapping and mobilization approach. And that is basically looking at the strengthening systems that are within the community because it is important for us to have, um, you know, activities that can stay in the communities, it is important that we work through the existing structures because these structures remain there. And when they have got the information very rightfully, and then they will be able to continue providing the needed uh, support and care and improvement that is required in the community. Next. Uh, as, as this model, and as we, Keep on improving, we, we realize some challenges uh, in, in working with the psychosocial focal points. And this, we, we realize that the PFPs basically themselves, some of them really present with high level of mental health psychosocial issues, which of course requires most of the time, you know, support and supervision that is required. And, and that is something that actually need to be paid attention to a lot. And uh, of course, uh, we, we need to, be able to be mindful of the uh, mental health of the psychosocial caregivers. So self-care activities is very, very important and they are wrote out most of the time to them. Limited referral options for mental health and uh, psychosocial problems. Uh, we were, like in South Sudan, um, our mental health services are, are indeed very low and we have one unit that is established at Juba level. And in the other states, uh, you know, mental health services are, are, are very, very low. Uh, inaccessibility due to insecurity challenges, poor roads, you know, and these conditions uh, are, are, are actually some of the challenges within that. And the PFP model that we have developed because these are community groups when they are trained, you know, it becomes, uh, you don't know, they do the work on their own will and then it sometimes becomes very difficult to, you know, continue, you know, retaining them in, in the work. Next. So, so over the year in our implementation of uh, mental health, we have a lot of uh, lessons learned, especially in the intersection between mental health and, and peace building. So we importantly recognize that it is important to engage women and youth uh, to be able to understand what conflict and violence means to them and what reactions they have and what do they do with those kind of reactions. For example, how do they manage their own anger? How do they manage their fear? How do they manage their uh, sadness that are actually as a result of violence that is coming? So understanding this on what it means to the women and the target groups that we are working with is, is very, very important because then they will understand it from their own language. And then it is also important that we do all a lot of uh, uh, strengthening you know positive coping mechanisms um, through uh, different activities that we do in the community to be able to help them come in terms with the all this the stressful life events of everyday life and before uh, they are able to deal if they are not able to cope positively with even their own challenges the stress level and the uh, yeah their mental health is not very clear and then it becomes very difficult for them to to, for women, girls, and the population to engage in dialogue and then uh, peace building uh, activities in the community. So that is important that we first want need to help people to be able to come into the terms with their own mental health, have, have very clear mind, are able to cope, they have developed resilience, and then they can be able to participate uh, uh, effectively in issues to do with peace building in their community. 
So we have also established women and girls friendly spaces, youth hubs, and uh, where the women themselves come together, they talk, uh, they share their experiences, uh, they have information from different uh, partners that are coming, they get mental health and psychosocial support information and interventions within these centers, uh, GBB prevention and response and case management referral uh, are done within this uh, center. So it provides an opportunities for these women to come and you know share their own experiences and get information on where else they can get support for their mental health. Next. So we realization that indeed mental health and psychosocial support and peace building uh, mutual responsing kind of new process, you cannot do one without the other. And this is indeed very, very important. And it requires an integrated approach which should be aimed basically at rebuilding broken relationship within the community. Community's trust is gone due to conflict, due to those community violence that is happening there. And then, you know, it's important that uh, those integrated approach between peace building uh, is, 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 is done. And then uh, those individuals, communities, first of all, comes into this term and then they're able to contribute uh, effectively to peace building processes. So people affected by conflict, are likely not able to engage in peace building activities or mediation and uh, development initiative, especially, you know, when women are there busy suffering from their, you know, uh, GVV related consequences when mental, their mental health is not being taken care of, and it becomes very difficult for them to meaningfully uh, participate in peace building activities. So that is why indeed importantly, we need to use an approach that integrate mental health and psychosocial uh, support uh, activities and interventions. So understanding the meaning of conflict from the perspective of the people affected is paramount. You know, experience, experience violence is basically not only, uh, you know, applied to uh, mental health problem. Many times when uh, there is a thinking that many people, when an event happened, everyone else, of course, get uh, traumatized. But normally what is very important, what happens here is that if people are engaged and people uh, are sensitized and people are taken through self-care activities, uh, then they would be able to uh, basically, you know, uh, be able come to come to terms and they would be able to, to cope with these different situations that are there in the community and the re negative reactions that actually comes out from the event. So, what is important here is that what processes are basically in the place, put in place to be able to manage people's reactions and that what interventions can help people cope with the negative reactions to these events that happen around them. So that is why uh, peace initiatives, uh, peace activities are very, very important. And then mental health services that enhances uh, resilience, coping is very, very important that they are uh, interlinked together. Next. Yes, so before we go to this, I'm going to also introduce to you to a very short video uh, that showcase all the intervention and our community engagement uh, processes in the communities, in the work of, the, uh, of our work with the PAPs and different community groups in enhancing people's mental health, promoting uh, positive coping strategies and then activities that also contribute to peace building uh, and conflict resolutions in the community. So thank you and enjoy watching for this time. Community and a awareness. Anna, they are in the awareness and Kalanta uh, GBV, Kalanta uh, mental health. In schools, I talk about early marriages, post marriages, uh, that girl child education is very important, that girls must be taken to school 
kaman kan fi banal ga suru fi iris ana bon sula kwana ta banade asan kere ma suru banade fi iris anna daiman ta len suano rijal anna ta bangori lomon anta kef nas begin fi bet an kalam bita nas al sarad merisa al bon sumum kef zo nas kan amul masakin يعني نازي حالي تبي دخل على سكيب بعاني سمو كيف سو كلمة سمو مساكي ااا لبنات نبوري لمن لو نحكم بزول في سيكا زول كلمة دوسو كلي زول وري لزول مسول أكو كيف يا هويلو سمبرا وديلو سلو إلاجات مساكي لكان كتير في بلد تاكمين تامنداري أو كمين في تنا تفايم أنا بيجا كون ميل إنجازمنت جروب بيجا أنا دير سمو كيف أمم بهيلو مساكي لار في هيلا أو في كوميونيتي Spesies ini, tapi nihia al ma bukan tak masak juga. Tapi kita juga fikir nihia ada ya ni modal tajia, tibet, modal taya. Tapi kalau nak kita risau, anak seksi an benar sata. Anak beli gua finance afgan tu mesti ia berfikir, mungkin dia beri jadi normal life. Kita beli gua mara di rasu di karabu, buat sulit fikir terlalu bodoh rayaan. Udah rasu mak karabu, dia strike ia ni gel batu bea kasur. Omo sulu gezi ni mara la, lakini na manana dada alifuga na bonus subo, obisi boka lamba bag dereja fagusu ni, fuga na more life. So, na gori la swan, ya sikuilo mafuki serib, kile kwa kile staka, kile kile fuga na soko la wadi wa bunge sulu la yajamani. Mwenye ni, ya ne, u kile ya ne, u kambi staka, abanta ite bugo zol bugo na hagani, ala yantu faras. Yani numretni kile zama gani bara? Gani manas? Wana sumanas? Jere? Be ita ma bokun di fikir kiti. Salam muhim. Budun salam. Belad bokun ni di masakil benbat. Ana bida ligo ino rojal unuswanto mani di masakila benbat. Masakila de ana bida kalfogo. Ana bika baamulo kanceling. Life tomo mangu rumu bika ini salam benbat. All right. Thank you very much, Boniface, for giving us uh, this glimpse of the incredibly difficult circumstances um, in which you carry out your work on a daily basis in South Sudan, and also explaining to us, um, and also th through this video, uh, the work that is being, the important work that is being done uh, by the PFPs. Um, you've also clearly shown, right, how how important it is uh, when when tackling issues of, of GBV and and, and promoting a, a peaceful environment. Uh, how important it is to also engage men and boys and youth in in general as part of uh, as part of the work. Uh, we will soon have a chance to speak with Harriet, uh, who is a, actually a PFP herself, uh, who is based in in Juba, who will be providing more insights uh, about her work and uh, perspective. Now, uh, it seems that we have a bit of a problem with the translation, unfortunately. Um, I think the Spanish uh, Spanish uh, people or Spanish speaking people cannot uh, follow what is, what is happening. Um, so we're going to try to make it as accessible as possible. Um, uh, I'll, I'll try to, to find, find a way now. Um, in uh, in translating also in Spanish what I what I say, um, but in any case, right now we're entering into a new uh, the the next phase of the webinar. Um, be basically bringing together what I think clearly comes out of both of your presentations uh, from South Sudan and Colombia, which is the essential work that is being carried out. Right, day in and day out by frontline and first line responders. So we're extremely happy to actually have today two uh, inspiring women who we've had the pleasure of, of working with as community-based actors within our programs in both Colombia and South Sudan. Uh, we're very, of course, mindful of the time and we're sorry that this is taking a little bit longer uh, than we had hoped, uh, but hopefully we can provide enough space for both Loli and Harriet uh, to give their, their, their insights. Uh, who are tireless advocates uh, who work on volunteer basis to try to foster uh, peace and well-being within their respective communities. 
So they will be sharing um, their lived experience and delve into the topics uh, that we just talked about uh, and we heard about from our presenters. And they will give us more concrete examples of their work and uh, the problems and the uh, challenges uh, that they face. Um, and hopefully this will give us an opportunity to get a better glimpse of how uh, MHPSS and peace building is understood in practice. So um, as we alluded also in the presentations, we'll also talk more in depth about the impacts of, of, of uh, gender-based violence and how tackling this issue is so deeply intertwined with the uh, processes of MHPSS and peace building. So I'm very happy to present our speakers. Uh, we have with us uh, Loli Huachibioi. Loli belongs to the Kamsha Biya community. Uh, she lives in the Sibundoy Valley, located in the Department of Putumayo in Colombia. Loli is a sociologist, a legal representative of the Jajain Corporation, and she has extensive experience as a social leader in the work for human rights, GBV, and indigenous and rural communities. Loli is currently engaged in health and TPO's processes that seek to promote the participation of uh, Kamsha girls and women, um, and in collaboration with the team, they're starting to establish strategies to prevent and address uh, GBV from a holistic and inter intersectional uh, health perspective. Uh, we also have Harriet, uh, Harriet Awate, who is a South Sudanese woman who is supported by our alliance partner, Eve, under the Leaders of Peace program, but trained and receiving coaching and mentorship by Health and TPO as a uh, psychosocial focal point based in Juba. Uh, she is an entrepreneur, a writer, an MHPSS advocate, a trauma healer, and a GBV caseworker. She's passionate about education, health, and mental health access for minority and underrepresented communities, including women and youth. So about uh, the Spanish, um, perhaps as a reminder, Loli will be speaking in Spanish. So for those who do not speak Spanish, please make sure you go and find the right language settings uh, so you can understand. Um, and uh, I, will be, I will be asking also part of the question in, in Spanish. So Loli also uh, understands uh, because of these problems with translations we're having. Uh, now, before we delve into the actual questions, um, so we've heard from the uh, previous conversations, uh, Loli, Harriet, about the context in which you're operating. So I'd like to ask you both if, uh, if there's anything you'd like to add to what was talked about that could help further situate us a little bit more within your contexts. Uh, and uh, if you tell us a little bit more about yourself, your work, and the types of problems that are affecting uh, the community. Um, Loli, um, uh, te voy a preguntar algo, espero que me escuche. Um, te queremos preguntar si puedes, por favor, agregar o puedes pues, ayudarnos a situarnos un poco mejor en, adentro de tu contexto uh, para que podamos entender un poco mejor sobre tu trabajo y uh, los problemas que existen en tu comunidad. Um, y te agradecemos uh, si puedes, por favor, uh, Hola, buenos días. Creo que tengo un problema con el tema de la traducción. Eh, no alcancé a escuchar. ¿Loli? ¿Loni, nos escuchas? Sí, yo los escucho. Sí, por favor, gracias. Te escuchamos. Voy a, voy a silenciar el, el, la aplicación, creo. Te escuchamos muy bien. Ahora, ahora no.
Creo Loli. que ahí... Sí, sí, sí. Sí, entonces te quería preguntar si, si, uh, si puedes responder a esta pregunta, si nos puedes un poco situarnos un poco mejor en tu contexto uh, uh, y, uh, y las problemáticas uh, en, la, en tu comunidad. Y explicarnos un poco más del trabajo que haces. Sí, sí, yo estoy, te estoy escuchando, pero no, lo, la verdad yo veo que, que hago todo eso, pero no. no. ¿Loli? ¿Nos escuchas? Sí, yo le pongo español y no hice... Si sí, no te preocupes, puedes responder en, es en español, no es ningún problema. Tamara, Tamara... Um... Just to let you know that Loli has selected the English channel and therefore she's not hearing the Spanish. Um, we're trying to help her to get back into the Spanish channel um, so that you can also hear her, uh, which might be why you can't hear her. Okay, so, so I have to put myself in the Spanish channel? No, wait in the general channel, uh, Tamara. Um, you will hear everyone, but Loli, we're just trying to get Loli into the Spanish channel. Okay, so meanwhile, while Loli is busy uh, with that, maybe I'll address the question to Harriet. Uh, so so hopefully uh, uh, Loli can, can figure it out uh, afterwards when she comes back. Harriet. Yeah. Um, yeah. Harriet, we unfortunately are not. <clears throat> I hope you can all hear me. Yes, great. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Tamara. Yeah, um, okay, yeah, uh, on the general context of uh, South Sudan, the situation of South Sudan is relatively young people in the general population in South Sudan are mainly looking for peace, and that is really so stable. Uh, basing on the work that I do in South Sudan as a PFP, uh, as a PFP, we actually uh, establish different types of groups in the community, and uh, that is the women group, um, the youth group, and then the women, uh, the male engagement groups, and then and uh, the children and groups as well. So what we actually do, we contact uh, weakness in the community, not only on GBV, but also on mental health and other activities. Because the problems they face here in South Sudan, it's mainly on the economic uh, hardships. We also have um, health issues, like um, especially on the referral pathways. Like, let me assume if someone is being raped, it's really like a little bit harder uh, to follow all the referral pathways in South Sudan. We don't have actually the clear context. Do. We also identify uh, different cases to we support them, and then we also uh, offer the 
social support and then also yes. counseling. It's, unfortunately, we cannot hear you very well. Because we have had. Perhaps you you may wish to disconnect your your video. Maybe it might work a little bit better. Been trained for several months, and okay, we cannot say like we are fully. counselors but at least we try our level best to support the community it sounds like we're having a lot of technical get, uh, maybe let me say uh counselors in south sudan because when you go to uh, Juba Teaching Hospital, and it's where you can find them, and then maybe some other uh, yeah. organizations. Is it clear now? Uh, uh, Harriet, uh, yeah, perhaps maybe you can find a spot where you, the, the, the Wi-Fi is working a little bit better because unfortunately we cannot hear you. Hello? If can you, you hear me now? If you're in the same building as Boniface, you, you can join perhaps, you can join him perhaps uh, in, uh, in his, uh, under, on his screen. Samara, just for your information, um, um, Loli will be changing to the general audio, so you can, if you speak in Spanish, she will hear you. Okay. Loli, me escuchas? Yes. It seems uh, it seems uh, that uh, we are having a little bit of of trouble now. Uh, okay, maybe maybe Harriet can try to speak on uh, my PC. Hello, everyone. Tamara, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Harriet. Yeah. I think I'll have to repeat everything. <laughs> <laughs> briefly, briefly, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was just uh, giving a general context of um, South Sudan, the situation in South Sudan, and uh, the situation of South Sudan is uh, relatively stable. Although women and the young people in the general population in South Sudan are mainly looking for peace, that is really so stable. So, and then I went ahead and I gave um, the roles of uh, PFP, like the work I do here as a PFP in South Sudan in the communities that I work with, uh, establishing the different groups that I talked about, and then um, identifying cases and reporting them, and also supporting and finding our referral pathways, and then making more awareness in the group uh, in the community, and then having uh, weekly meetings with the communities groups that I formed, and then having um, work plans on the activities that I'll be carrying out and offering also psychosocial support and counseling to the community as well. So basically that is what I was trying to pass through. Thank you so much, Harriet. It's really unfortunate <laughs> before, um, but uh, no, thank you for giving this context. Let's see if we manage to reach to, uh, to Loli. Loli, me escuchas? Looks like 
we have lost Loli. Also being very mindful of the time <laughs> because uh, we said that this webinar would last until, until five and uh, you're all very busy with your schedules. And in light with all these, um, these difficulties, uh, these technical challenges, um, we may uh, offer uh, the possibility perhaps to uh, record Loli's and Harriet's comments um, uh, as suggested by also one of the audience members uh, to record your answers and uh, share those along uh, to all the uh, audience participants uh, along with, with, the, with these slides uh, as well. Um, uh, in, in that way, we can also uh, yeah, ensure that we, we have some time to answer some of the questions that have come uh, in, the, in the chat box. And you also will have an opportunity to delve deeper into these questions uh, instead of you know, going quickly uh, uh, just for the sake of time. So, so maybe uh, I would like to, uh, to ask you if that, that would be okay uh, for, for both of you. Um, or Ananda, do you have any other suggestions perhaps? No, that, I think that's a great suggestion, Tamara. What we will do is we can um, attach the video uh, responses or inputs from um, Loli and others to the recording that we have made of this webinar and upload that so that everyone can, can access it later. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I I truly uh, apologize, uh, really, for 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 both uh, both of you, Harriet and Lolly. I really I really hope that that is okay with you. But what we can do is take um, the some of the questions that have come up come here in the uh, uh, in the audience, and uh, and I will address these uh, to you, um, and and we can hear you uh, and your responses uh, from these. Um, and um, yeah, and for the rest of the questions that have not been addressed, uh, we can include these and in our answers uh, uh, later when we share everything with you. Uh, would that be okay? Harriet and uh, Loli, I don't know if Loli, you are hearing that. Loli just managed to come back in. Um, perhaps you would just uh address her in Spanish because she will not be able to access the translation. Okay. Um, Loli, acabam, acabamos de, de decir es que tenemos muchas dificultades técnicas um, hoy. Uh, el hecho que no podemos escucharte tampoco. Bueno, también con Harry hemos, hemos tenido algunos problemas. Y por cuestión de tiempo, um, uh, es, es muy difícil ahora, uh, quizás, no sé si vamos a poder tener la oportunidad de realmente entrar en detalle en, en uh, las respuestas y las preguntas, uh, pero, pero lo que podemos hacer y lo que te queramos um, preguntar es si estás de acuerdo de registrar algunas uh, las respuestas a las preguntas uh, y después estos, estos registros los vamos a enviar a todos los participantes Um, para, y después también te da la oportunidad de realmente entrar en detalle en, en las respuestas uh, en vez de, de ir súper rápido ahora uh, para asegurar que, que, que estamos en tiempo en todo. Entonces, sí, te queríamos decir eso, si, si está bien para ti hacer un, un, uh, registrar uh, tus preguntas, uh, que lo podemos hacer después. Y ahora hay un, um, lo que podemos hacer es ver las, uh, las preguntas en, uh, de la audiencia y ver si puedes, y si, y si, y si, uh, si puedes integrar tus respuestas a partir de esas, uh, de esas preguntas. Hola, hola. ¿Sí me escuchan? Sí, te escuchamos. Bueno, uh, sí, no hay ningún problema, claro que sí. Muchísimas gracias, Lori, y, y mucho, y de verdad uh, te agradecemos muchísimo por, por el, bueno, todo el tiempo también que has, has pasado por venir aquí y todo. 
todo lo demás, um, pero vamos a asegurar que tus respuestas uh, puedan ser compartidas uh, de, manera, uh, de manera, de buena manera para todos. Thanks. Um, okay, so I really apologies then for Harriet and, and Loli, and we'll go over to a short Q&A, of course, being very mindful of the, of the time. Uh, if we uh, if 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 we're happy with this, we'll just have a sh very few uh, questions, and the rest we will take these up and uh, answer them in, in writing and share this uh, with you later. Um, all right, let's have a look at uh, at the questions. Uh, let's come in. So. We had one of the first questions um, that was uh, asked was if you could elaborate a little bit more on any examples of activities that contribute to conflict prevention and peace building uh, and including uh, the mechanisms uh, around, uh, around these activities. Um, so, this is not directed a particular person, but I would like to maybe ask it to, uh, to, to uh, in fact, Harriet and, and, and Loli, uh, if, uh, if maybe you could answer this question. Loli, esta pregunta uh, de la audiencia es si puedes elaborar un poco más sobre los uh, ejemplos de actividades que contribuyen a la prevención del conflicto y, uh, y procesos de paz en tu comunidad y los mecanismos detrás. Y eso te puede dar por la oportunidad, si, puede, si te, no tenemos problemas técnicos, uh, de elaborar um, un poco más sobre tu contexto y lo que estás haciendo. Um, Loli, ¿quieres, ¿quieres empezar? Sí, hola. Eh, buenos días. Voy a apagar la cámara para que no tenga problemas con la conectividad. Yo creo que es mejor porque está muy intermitente. Entonces, eh, entendí que, eh, bueno, sería como un poco comentar el trabajo que se hace acá en el territorio, eh, en el pueblo Camuntra prácticamente, y bueno, con el, con el colectivo de mujeres del pueblo Camuntra, ¿no? como hemos venido haciendo un ejercicio, un trabajo, primero de, de conocer y reconocer también cómo eh, esos tipos de violencia ¿no? que se vienen de San Tanto históricamente eh, porque el pueblo Camontra es un pueblo originario de, de este lugar que para nosotros estaba ¿no? y que desde este lugar pues eh, podemos entender cómo un proceso de colonización y de evangelización al llegar a nuestro territorio pues fuimos violentados física y culturalmente ¿no? Y en ese sentido, pues, en, en las mujeres del pueblo Camontra es, es una dimensión también quizá un poco desconocida e invisibilizada en el sentido en que nosotras eh, también por este sistema patriarcal eh, de alguna manera no, no, no ha sido posible pues poder entender, conocer y reconocer estas, eh, estas violencias, ¿no? Que de alguna manera han sido, pues, naturalizadas y que las estrategias que nosotros, pues, hemos venido como haciendo es volver a recordar primero nuestra cosmovisión, ¿no? Eh, en ese sentido, pues, la medicina, el cultivo en, el, en la chagra o en la tierra, eh, los diferentes tejidos, son como un mecanismo tanto de de fortalecimiento cultural como también de eh, terapia, podríamos decirlo, ¿no? Porque nuestras eh, abuelas, eh, nuestras madres, las mujeres que cultivan eh, o siembran en la tierra, de alguna manera hacen esa conexión con la naturaleza y eso hace eh, de alguna manera pues el, ese vínculo de entendimiento con el territorio, con la tierra, y con nuestros cuerpos, ¿no? Entonces, y también eso ha servido para eh, dar cuenta también cómo tanto el cuerpo de la mujer es violentado por el solo hecho de ser mujer y cómo también el, el, el territorio o la tierra también es violentada por 
por todos estos eh, problemas, por todas, digamos, esos intereses económicos extractivistas, ¿no? Eh, y, bueno, nuestro territorio como pueblo Camontra está, de alguna manera, eh, ya mm, eh, podríamos decir que fue, nuestro territorio fue despojado, nos fue despojado, entonces por eso las, la gran mayoría de las familias jóvenes o de las comunidades cuentan es con un mínimo de, de tierra para trabajar y sin embargo pues eh, se sigue teniendo ahí como nuestras plantas medicinales, nuestros, eh, eh, nuestras plantas alimenticias y bueno y la convivencia también con los seres que la habitan, ¿no? Eh, y bueno y aparte de eso pues también estamos rodeados de, de personas o, o personas no de la comunidad que ellos pues de alguna manera están sembrando o, o tienen sus embríos de monocultivo y, y como tienen monocultivo utilizan muchos tóxicos, muchos agrotóxicos y eso de alguna manera ha afectado tanto en la salud eh, física y por qué no decirlo mental para la, no solamente las mujeres del pueblo Camontra, sino de toda la comunidad, de las comunidades que la habitamos. Entonces, bueno, ha sido como un ejercicio interesante el poder ampliar más este conocimiento sobre las violencias basadas en género, porque nosotros la abordamos ahí, ¿no? Todo lo que le pasa a nuestra madre tierra, pues eso se vincula también a, lo, a las problemáticas que nosotras también como mujeres tenemos. Y, y eso sería como por ahora mi aporte. Gracias. Muchísimas gracias, Loli, por este aporte muy, muy importante. Y pienso que cuando, cuando después puedes grabar tus respuestas, uh, puedes entrar también en más detalle um, eh, con, con, en, en toda esta temática, entre, entre el lazo, entre uh, qué quiere decir la salud mental en tu comunidad y procesos de paz. Uh, Harriet, I'm going to go over to you uh, with the same question, uh, and I think after that, because of time, uh, we will wrap up our, our discussion, and again, we will be, um, uh, yeah, like I mentioned, right, we will collect your answers and share it with everyone. Uh, Harriet, um, if, you, if you would like to go ahead. Just sorry, sorry, Tamara. We, you know, our internet is really now very bad. We put off generator somewhere, so it, we couldn't get, you know, the last remarks and uh, the responses given by Loli. So if you can uh, uh, basically go through. Last, last remarks, and then that So, um, uh, I, I may not translate everything of what Loli, Loli mentioned. I think um, after that, we'll have the opportunity uh, to share the recordings with her answers, and you will see her, her answers. But I think uh, basically the question links back to what one of the, the audience member asked, which is to provide maybe examples of activities um, that are being car carried out uh, currently uh, to promote uh, um, uh, peace building and uh, conflict uh, prevention uh, within your communities. And we, could, we would like to hear a little bit from Harriet uh, uh, about it, uh, um, to give some examples of activities and interventions. Thank you. I think that's clear now. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, Tamara. Uh, of course, yeah, we didn't get the chance to go through all our questions, but I'll just go through the activities so quick because of time. Uh, the activities that we actually carry out in the community is uh, engaging with the women and youth in the community to talk about um, these concepts of uh, peace and well-being and and for them to understand it in their own uh, languages, that is driving into the meaning. Um, through that, we came up with the 
uh, women groups, like we form different groups. Uh, we have the women groups, the youth group, um, the men, male engagement groups, and then also our children. Uh, so we, through that, we managed to organize uh, brainstorming sessions with the with the groups that we formed, and uh, for them to try to manage uh, their negative reactions to things that happen in the environment in their community, and that is still linking to mental health. And then when you look at mental health, it's wide. And then so through that, we try to manage the negative reactions. That is uh, the anger management. Um, the stress management and then also conflict and we actually came up with um, different activities coping the positive coping mechanisms to that and that is um, we came up with sports activities uh, in the community and then we also came up with uh, you know you have to socialize so through socializing we came up with uh, cultural traditional competitions in the community and then we came up with actually different um, activities in the community and then we also uh, through the same group we also promote uh, peace and mental well-being in the community we have engaged the women the same group uh, and then the youth on self-care activities we first identify what the self practices do they need or they have so um we also came up with the uh, creation of uh, safe spaces for the women, for them to come and discuss their own issues, um, how to solve the problems. And through that, they try to share the experiences they have and then access to information. And also with the male uh, engagement groups that we formed, uh, they also discuss similar things and also parenting, um, how to manage their families. And that is also trying to promote um, GBV. Yeah, and then uh, we also form uh, the youth groups and then we came up with different hubs for the youth where they can come together and share their issues and then how and that one we are creating more awareness in the community. So basically that's what we do and then um, besides the GBV and then uh, the mental health issues because mental health and then uh, coming up with the peace and well-being in the community we also came up with entrepreneurship. So entrepreneurship also uh, we also encourage these women to come and then to uh, model pots, uh, handcrafts. That one can also help them because we are facing lots of issues on the economic hardships in the community. So through that, they try to raise some capital for themselves and manage their family and the community at large. Yeah. So because of time, I think I can just stop here. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful, Harriet. Really, thank you so much. Just to cover. Uh, a really broad scope of activity that you're undertaking in such a short and concise amount of time. Now, we, we thank, thank you both. Really, I'm very mindful of time, and I think we will have to wrap this session. Uh, but as we mentioned, uh, we're going to give you space to be able to really delve deeper into these topics, and we will really share that information with the rest of the audience to continue also engaging with all of you. Um, uh, and and uh, and following up on these important topics, um, I, I also, as a final note, I want to. And if you want to find out more about the work of of Loli and and Harriet, and to continue following or supporting their work, um, uh, we're we're going to link uh, some of, uh, in the chat box. Um, uh, we're going to add some links to their initiatives, uh, so you can follow more about their work. Uh, Loli about her Corporación Jajan. Uh, in uh, in Putumayo, and uh, from Harriet um, about the initiative that she in, uh, that she started uh, called Pseudo uh, Girl Membership. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Pseudo Girl Mentorship. Excuse me, Harriet. Um, uh, uh, linking back to this entrepreneurship, right, of of women. Um, and if you want to find out more about HealthNet TPO, please visit our website and our social media pages, and we will continue discussing these topics. Um, so thank you again for everyone uh, for participating uh, and for those who stuck with us uh, till the end. Uh, we really thank you and, and, uh, and we hope that this uh, this webinar has provided some insights and further understandings about these complex interlinkages between MHPSS and peace building from these two different uh, contexts. Um, and we hope to continue have engaging with these conversations uh, together with the IESC group, together with, with all of you and, and, and others. 
So Ananda, um, over to you. No, just it just remains uh, uh, for me to thank everyone also for your endurance. I mean, technical difficulties uh, when we're connecting so many people across uh, different contexts, different types of devices, I'm afraid is is just a part of the part of our reality. But thank you for your patience with that. And just on behalf of the MHPSS and Peace Building Working Group of the IC MHPSS Reference Group, I'd really like to thank all the speakers of today's webinar, Carolina, Andrea, Loli, Harriet, and Boniface for sharing your work and uh, experiences with us. And of course, also you to you, Tamara, for your preparation and moderation of the session, <laughs> um, despite all the difficulties also. Uh, and just also thanks, uh, sincere thanks to everyone who's attended uh, the webinar today and, and for your really um, active and, and enthusiastic engagement. Um, so please do join us next time. We have uh, one of the webinars in our series. And I think um, uh, the colleague Valeria has shared a link to a, a community of practice space that we have on mhpss.net where you can share resources and also hopefully connect with one another. Just remains for me to say thank you and, and good night or uh, good rest of the day to all of you. Um, and we will close the the webinar room shortly. And thanks also once more to the to the interpreters, uh, uh, Raul and Renee. Good night. Bye.